Your agricultural uh, societies across rural Ontario are making the difficult decisions to cancel uh, their fall fairs this year. Some of these fall fairs have been around since before uh, Confederation. Mr. Speaker, not only is this a terrible loss for these communities of important community events, but it's also putting an important, uh, significant financial strain on these agricultural societies. What action is the government taking to support agricultural societies in Canada? Honourable Minister. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for his question. What we've done is we've put forward monies to support our regional development agencies. These agencies have the mandate and the ability to support local initiatives, including the events that he has highlighted. This is more than doubling the budget that currently exists, so we have sufficient resources to support communities and these very important local events. Mr. Nader. Mr. Speaker, the arts and culture industry has a massive impact on local economies. In my riding alone, we have the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, Stratford Festival, Drayton Entertainment, and the Stratford Summer Music. The postponement and the cancellation of the seasons of these important cultural institutions is having a massive impact on the hospitality industry, including local restaurants, hotels, bed and breakfasts. Mr. Speaker, so many of these businesses are small businesses and owner-operated businesses where they are falling through the cracks of the government's programs that have been introduced. How will the government address the blind spot in their programs for small businesses in communities like this, which rely on the tourism, arts and culture industry. The Honourable Minister. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the Honourable Colleague for his question. Clearly, we understand how important these organizations are to these communities. That is why we allocated $500 million to respond to the specific financial needs of arts, heritage and sports organizations to help them be more resilient through this difficult time. And last week, we rolled out the funding of this announcement, and we look forward to engaging with communities across the country. Mr. Nader. Mr. Speaker, 1.8 million jobs are attributed to the tourism industry in Canada. Among these, 740,000 740, of these jobs are related to international travelling. No one, no one wants to see the borders open or reopen until it's safe to do so. But can the government provide clarity on what criteria will be used uh, to provide some information to these uh, tourism operators of how and when and under what criteria international borders will be reopened. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, I'd like to thank the member opposite for his question and above all I would like to thank the member opposite for his view that we need to be cautious and prudent and put the health and safety of Canadians first. That is very much the view of our government as well. When it comes to international borders, the health and safety of Canadians is absolutely the first criteria we're going to look at. Of course, we will be looking at the situation with coronavirus. Mr. Nader. Mr. Speaker, many Canadians continue to fall through the cracks of the programs announced by this government. One of my constituents only recently returned to the workforce after spending many years out of the workforce raising her children. As such, she doesn't qualify for the $5,000 minimum requirement for income during the past 12 months. How will the government address these people who are falling through the cracks? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are mindful of the very difficult circumstances in which many Canadians find themselves. We have put into place a number of different measures to help them, and we're going to continue to do so. Mr. Nader. Mr. Speaker, it's been reported that as many as 15 per cent of, of farmers and farm families in Canada could face bankruptcy and going out of business uh, because of the massive impact that COVID-19 is having on agriculture in Canada. Business risk management programs are not working for these farm families, and the processing capacity is simply not there for farmers and for farm families, especially in the beef and the pork industry. How will the government immediately address the short-term processing capacity issues found for the beef and pork sectors, and when will they finally live up to the commitment of a complete review of business risk management programs? The Honourable Minister. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Alors... Thank you very much, Chair. I am in discussions with my provincial counterparts to look at the range of risk management programs. The Agri Stability Program that we have offered to producers, well, we've extended the date of application until July, and they can quickly get uh, an advance of 70 per cent or more in provinces where that's possible. So before they say that the program's not working, I would ask them to use the calculator we have online and to look at how much they can receive. Mr. Speaker, this government continues to show a blind spot for small businesses in Canada. So many don't qualify for the CEBA because they don't have a high enough payroll or they don't have a business account. Mr. Speaker, so many small businesses are falling through the cracks. Will they expand the, the criteria so that small businesses in my community and across Canada can qualify for the important uh, assistance that they need at this time? 
The Honourable Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to remind the Honourable Colleague that we did expand the eligibility criteria threshold from 50,000 down to 20,000 so more businesses could be eligible. Also, the top end as well for salaries from $1 million to $1.5 million as well. And that is why we have seen 590,000 small business loans issued. That's a testament to the program. But we'll again. The next question will go to Mr.